What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Blue here. You're my boy, Blue. This week's Blue's Budget Battle Brews. We are doing a build that I literally just finished not even a week ago. Getting everything together. I'm calling this one Breaching the Firewall. Okay? This one's a little different, so let me give you the strategy for this one, and we'll go from there. This one is to play your mana-producing walls. And I mean very, very much mana-producing walls. And then eventually cast fireballs all over the place, left and right, that pretty much burn your opponent off the board. So, let me show you the deck first. This one's a little different. I love this build. This one's one of the ones I came up with as I was going through my stuff. I'll show you the build, and then we'll go over some... some uh, Stuff to upgrade it, and then we'll get out of here. All right. So what I say, your mana producing wall is things like Overgrown Battlement. And green has a bunch of these, like stuff like this. So we start off, it's two to cast. It's an 04 Defender. This one actually is a wall. Not everything in here is a wall, but it's close enough. And it says tap to add one mana in your mana pool for each creature with Defender you control. You can see where that's going. <coughs> All right. So four of them in there, obviously. And there is no one drop in here. Unfortunately, there was no one to cast wall that helped to give me mana. Uh, the next wall, also two to cast, is the Wall of Roots. Again, Defender. It's an 05. And the walls help keep you alive because there aren't a lot of things that are two or three or four to cast that have a higher defense than some of these things. Okay? So 04, 05. They'll help block for you while also helping produce mana for you. Okay? Uh, wall of Roots is an 05 that has Defender and has the ability to put a minus zero, minus one counter on it. And you can add a green to your mana pool, and you can activate this ability once each turn. This includes your opponent's turn, in case you want to do something on your opponent's turn. Play set of those. Vine Trellis, another two to cast with Defender. It's an 04. That also taps to add a green. The big boy here is Axbane Guardian, so he's three to cast. Shouldn't be a problem in this deck. This is basically all just mana dudes. It's an 03 wall, so it's not really going to block a lot, but it can block in the beginning. Again, it has Defender, and then you can add X mana and any combination of colors to your mana pool where X is the number of creatures with Defender you control. And a lot of things in here with Defender, so you can possibly get this up to 10, maybe even 12, per. All right, play a set of those. Uh, Carbon Karyatid is in here for a little bit of defense, because it also has Defender. It's only three to cast, and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, because we all know that, you know, red and green don't have a lot of options as far as drawing cards. They have some, but not a lot. <laughs> uh, so what do we do with all that mana? Here's the red part. Valakut Invoker is the first thing. So 3 to cast, 2-3. Actually, that's actually not bad. A 2-3 helps keep you alive as well. The ability for each 8, and this is each 8. So if you have 16 mana available, which you possibly can, and you can do this as an instant speed, so keep that in mind as well, he deals 3 damage to target creature or player. So you can either start burning your opponent's creatures off the board, or you can burn your opponent off the board, whichever you choose. I put 2 of those in there, and then I got 2 Vent Sentinels in here. It's 4 to cast, it's 2-4, also has Defender, and its ability is for a red and 1, tap it, it deals damage to target player equal to the number of creatures with Defender you control. See where that's going? So you don't even have to cast Fireballs, now you can just use your own creatures to add mana, and also burn your opponent off the board. Alright, two of those in there. Uh, if that's not the only way to go, here's another way. 5 to cast for a Skargan Hellkite. It's a 4-4 four, four for 5, it's a dragon that has Riot. Now... With Riot, <laughs> the creature will either enter the battlefield with your choice of one, haste or a plus one, plus one counter. For this build, you're going to choose the plus one, plus one counter because its ability is for each four you pump into it. It deals two damage divided any way you choose amongst any one or two targets. That could be creatures, players, planeswalkers, whatever. And you can only activate this ability if you have a plus one, plus one counter on it, which is why you're going to choose the plus one, plus one counter. And you can do it at any time and as many times as you have mana for it. All right, being able to divide your damage up means that you can kill lots of things off the board if you need to. Uh, Tormenting Voice, obviously, you're trying to get to the things you need. So sometimes discarding a land card to draw two cards that are pure fire, uh, like fire balls, or getting your answers, always a good thing. So I got four of them in there. And this one, uh, next is Thrill of Possibility. It's the instant speed version. So again, discard a card, draw two cards. So the point of this deck is to get to your fuel, get to the things that need to be put on the field. And of course, fireballs. I got four of them lovely bastards in there. Why? Because more fire equals more gooder. So if you've never actually read the way a fireball works, it's a one X, one red and X spell. However, this actually can let you divide damage up. So for each one extra you pay, you can divide the damage up between that many targets. So if you pay 10, you can do either nine damage to a single target 
or you can divide, I believe, so you're taking 10. You're taking one red for the spell and one red, so you're down to eight to divide it up between two targets. And you can divide, uh, I believe that's eight damage, so four damage up between two targets. So that's the simple explanation. If you need more, let me know. I'll, I'll explain it more. So, uh, of course, we're going to have more X spells in here. <laughs> Next up is Devil's Play. It deals X damage to a creature or player, but you can also flash it back. So more chances to deal X damage to things. So you can even use this as a discard fodder to play later for things like Tormenting Voice. Uh, Avicen's Judgment. Again, I, the reason why I chose the two draw spells, the Tormenting Voice and the other one, what the hell is it called? Uh, Throw of Possibilities, because I, I included stuff in here that doesn't uh, matter if you discard it. So Avicen's Judgment. It's normally a 2 to cast, and it deals 2 damage divided in any way you choose amongst any number of targets. Uh, it has madness, though, for a red and X. So what that does is, if you've discarded it for some reason, I wonder what, you now can pay one red and X, and it deals X damage divided any way you choose amongst any number of targets. Okay? So I put in here things to help you draw cards, and also help it so that when you discard things, you get benefit from it. Alright. And then still energies in here, and, and you may not have ever seen this card before. I got a bunch of these, so I wanted to try to use these in a deck that would make sense. All right. Instill energy. What it basically means is that once a turn, you can untap a creature. Okay. Now, the first part is that target creature may attack the turn it comes into play. It doesn't give your creature haste. I wish it did. It just means that it can attack. And you're using walls, so you're not really going to worry about that. What you're worried about is the zero to cast, uh, the zero cost ability, which is to untap a creature once a turn. Okay. So what that is for is for things like Overgrown Battlement or for Axbane Guardian. You put it on them so you can double tap them for mana. All right, and I got four of them in there so you can do it for multiple ones. Because remember, you've got four Overgrown Battlements and you've got four Axbane Guardians, so you should have enough targets. Uh, the last one is for Alternate Wincon. Con. All right, so Assault Formation. <laughs> it says each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Let's look at that for a second. Like, Wall of Roots is a 2 to cast 05. Can you imagine it's a 2 to cast 5 5 if you got Assault Formation out in play? So that's what this is for. In case your first plan doesn't work, your second plan is to be able to attack with way bigger creatures than your opponent has because they're walls. Uh, for a green, target creature with defender can attack as though it didn't have defender, making your walls attack. Sound familiar? I have other wall decks that do this. And then for three, creatures you control get plus zero, plus one at the end of turn. That's to help make your defense a lot better too, but it can also help for attacking. So two ways to win. You can burn them out with a lot of extra mana, or you can take your really cheap to cast walls and make them attack. So those are the ways you're going to win here. Uh, the rest of the deck is the lands. Two, uh, four ghoul guild gates for mana fixing, so you can have the right colors, and then obviously the rest is mountains and forests. So that's basically the deck in a nutshell. It's actually a pretty fun deck. I came up with it while I was um, uh, sorting through my cards, and I noticed I had a, a, a lot of mana producing walls, and I was like, well, how can I be taking advantage of that? So... And again, not all of them are walls. I, I said it before. Axbane Guardian is not a wall. It's a druid, but it just has defender. So I just say walls in general. So again, fun deck. Uh, definitely not the norm, but definitely fun to play. So uh, let's go over a couple things to upgrade the deck now. So to upgrade the deck, you can do it a couple ways. All right. First thing I'm going to tell you is you can change out the carbon caryatids and throw in the two Colossus of Akros. And what that will give you is an additional win con. So there are 10 tens that have defender and indestructible, and then you can pay an absorbent amount of money, which obviously this deck can create to give it monstrosity, making it a 20, 20 indestructible creature that can attack. So alternate win, win, win condition. Uh, you can change out wall of roots and put in stuff like the Sylvan Caryatid, which is, has hex proof and can tap to add mana. And here's where this, uh, I'm going to say you can do either or. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because Wall of Roots, you can actually use the mana during your opponent's turn, whereas the Sylvan Carry did, you can, but you can't double up, so you can't use it on your turn and then your opponent's turn. Uh, Wall of Roots also doesn't tap, whereas Sylvan Carry did does, so this is an either-or. You can use either one. Uh, as far as the spells, obviously the biggest upgrade here would be taking out the Fireballs and putting in Comet Storms. Just, you know, they're just all around better, but they're also Mythics. Uh, you can take out the Tormenting Voices uh, and put in Harmonizes instead. They help you draw three cards. They're also a little bit more expensive monetarily. Not much, but they're still a little more expensive. They're also harder to get a hold of. They're not as readily available. Uh, you can take out uh, the Devil's Play and the Avacyn's Judgment I have in there and put in two more Assault Formations if you want to double up on win cons so you can do more attack if you need to. Uh, then you can take out the inst uh, Instill Energies. You can take all them out. So you can put in Growing Rights of Illimac. So what that will do is, and I know that they're legendary, so taking out all four doesn't always make sense. You can do two or three for three. Uh, it's a legendary enchantment that when it comes into play, you can search the top, I think, four cards of your library. 
grab, grab a creature and put it in your hand. So it helps you draw what you need. Uh, but when you have four or more creatures in play, it turns into a guy's cradle. And what a guy's cradle does, which I'm just going to go ahead and show you what a guy's cradle does, because that's also one of my upgrade suggestions, but they're also mo way too expensive. Uh, Growing Rights of Vizlamac turns into is basically a poor man's version of a guy's cradle. So each one taps to add a mana equal to the number of creatures you have in play. And as you can tell, that's pretty much the theme of this deck here. So those are the suggestions I have for you so that you can basically throw lots of big-ass fireballs at your opponent's face. Any questions you have, any comments about the deck, any concerns you may have, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, you can do it in a couple ways. You can go ahead and contact me on Facebook. It's Blue Bears Games on Facebook. You can send me an email, bluebearsgames at gmail.com. Or you can put a comment in the section of this video, the comment section of this video below. Tell me how to contact you, and I will go ahead and do so. Uh, but that's the upgrade section. That is the deck uh, for this week. We've got a couple more weeks to go before the convention, so I'm going to be doing a couple more. Uh, if you, again, do me the favor, uh, like the video, this is a pretty cool deck, i got to be honest with you. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. I do a lot of these things, so I don't know why you wouldn't. And share this out to anybody who might like some funky, cool, uh, weird decks that just, you know, shouldn't work but do. Uh, or somebody who may want to purchase this deck. Again, this deck is available for sale. It's $20, just like all my Blues Budget Battle Brews. This will be available at the convention here in New Jersey. That's where I do them. It's in, uh, Woodbury. Uh, it's called Geek Fest. It will be in a couple weeks, so I'm trying to get all these decks out there beforehand because that's what I do as one of my services. I build decks for people to begin with so that people who don't really know how to build decks or don't like deck building, I do that for them. Uh, they're beginner level or intermediate level. They are not expert level. This one's actually kind of, this one could be a surprise expert if you do it right. Uh, so yeah, come on out if you're in the area. If you're not, you know, this deck is available for sale online on the Facebook marketplace up until the con. Then during the day of the con, everything comes down. These will be put back up. Whatever doesn't sell at the con will be put back up for sale later. So uh, they may even be up during the convention, but if something sells, I will take it down. So, anyway, that's my time for the week. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. Uh, have a good weekend. I will see you all next week.